Hey everybody, this is Dr. Jen. I'm coming to you right now from Fort Collins, Colorado, where I've been filming prairie dogs. Uh, I'm an animal behaviorist. I study animals, but I also like to help people solve their problems. So today, this episode is about how to deal with a lazy coworker. Someone I know was recently talking to me about the problems they were having with a coworker who was not doing their fair share. So he asked me, what can you do about it? The first thing to know is that you're not alone in dealing with this problem. Yep, there are other animals that have to deal with lazy coworkers, and they have ways to solve the problem of cheaters who refuse to pull their own share of the weight. Now, if you were this guy, Dinopanera quadriceps, a queenless ant from Brazil, you could just smear your colleague with a chemical that alerts others that they are not doing their work. Basically, you'd be tattling. The end result? Well, for these slackers, chemical immobilization as punishment. Unfortunately for us, not only would HR probably frown upon chemical immobilization of slackers, you'd also earn the reputation of being a snitch. Tattling, chemical immobilization, not recommended. So what can you do? Ultimately, it depends on the scenario. Let's say you're part of a team. Leaf cutter ants are team workers, so they are a perfect example. Look at them working so hard. The ones carrying all those leaves on their back are the foragers. What you don't see are the gardeners, the large workers, and the soldiers. What this means is that your first line of defense in dealing with a coworker who's not pulling their fair share, figure out what the team roles are. This means you have to go to your team leader or supervisor, assuming they're good at their job, and find out exactly what your part is and what your deliverables are. This way, you can't be held responsible for what other people don't do. In the case of leafcutter ants, these foragers know exactly what's expected of them and they won't be penalized if the gardeners drop the ball. The other thing to keep in mind is they definitely do not do jobs that aren't assigned to them. Now, managers, take note. The more clearly defined the roles are of the team members, the happier all your workers will be and the better they will perform. But, Dr. Jen, you say, what if you aren't working as part of a team project and you're stuck doing the work because the work just has to get done and someone else in the office isn't doing their job? This is a classic cheater worker. And while many people dishing out advice would say, ah, life isn't fair, the reality is that we, along with chimpanzees, rats, and a slew of other species really react badly to unfairness. We don't like it. Thing is, we need a strategy that can help you and being angry won't be enough. What you can do though, is infuse your style with a little vampire bat. Yep, this guy, face only a mother could love. Vampire bats are champion cooperators because they don't tolerate cheaters. For a vampire bat, life is pretty stressful and you could starve. In fact, 40% of vampire bats don't find enough food on any given night. So they have a system in place where they can help each other out. So how do vampire bats solve this problem? Ingenious. When one bat finds food, it brings it back and another hungry bat who didn't find any food asks for food. The one who got food shares. Now, the kicker is that the next time around, if you shared with your buddy and you come back hungry and your buddy has food and they don't share with you, then you don't ever help them again. So eventually, a vampire bat that's a cheater won't have anybody to help them and will have a bad reputation. Vampire bats have mastered the art of staying away from a cheater, and you can do this too. One way you can do this is approach your manager or boss and say that you would like to feel more challenged or take on new tasks, including getting the opportunity to work with someone in the office. Basically say that you want to collaborate and cooperate with your coworkers. You need to choose carefully because you want to choose someone that has a good reputation for cooperation. And this can put some distance between you and your slacker coworker. What this also means is that help away when someone helps you back, but don't help to your detriment. You won't win any bounty points and you'll just start to get angry and resentful. Instead, 
find someone with a solid reputation and work closely with them in the office. Another option is to communicate your accomplishments to your boss. Now, I don't mean bragging, boasting, or posturing like this cock of the rock. Yep, that's its name, a cock of the rock bird. I mean keeping your boss informed about what you're doing. Out here studying the prairie dogs, you hear a lot of chitter chatter. Ch -ch 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 They're talking to everybody about what's going on. And so what you can do is be a little prairie dog and make an appointment with your boss, let's say a regular meeting once a month, where you just fill them in on what's going on, what you're looking to accomplish, what your long-term goals are. Chances are your lazy coworker isn't doing this. And eventually your boss will figure out who's not pulling their fair share. Other animals rely on self-policing, tattletale signaling, or specialized policing. Remember that chemical immobilization? For us, we've got a few strategies up our sleeve that we can borrow from some other animals. So let's recap. One, you want to get clearly defined roles, just like those leaf cutter ants. Two, if you're not part of a team, ask your boss if you can start working with certain people. First, pay attention to who is a good, solid, hard worker and will pull their fair share and try to get closer to them. That's a little vampire bat. And stop helping those who aren't doing their own work. And third, communicate. Tell your boss what you're up to. Make regular meetings with your boss and fill them in. And also let him know what your goals are so that in the next meeting, you can let him or her know how close you've gotten to meeting those goals. And that how you deal with a lazy coworker. Thanks for listening.